Hey, you. Right, first things first, the Interceptor 650. It was my plan today to get that um, second instalment of the exhaust video out. Finally seem to have had a break in the weather, which has been horrific for about a month now. And I finally managed to get her booked in for an MOT yesterday, late yesterday morning, which she passed with flying colours, by the way. And it's always nice when an MOT tester passes comment on the wonderful condition of your bike for its age and the fact that there's not a spot of rust on it anywhere now the intention was to get the bike home from the mot testing center get a tax get out and get this part two video filmed but there was a bit of a fly in the ointment you need your v5 to um retax the bike and i can't find mine anywhere so i've had to apply for a duplicate and as soon as I receive that duplicate, I'll get the bike taxed and I'll get on with that video. Right, so the new 400cc single cylinder motorcycles from the Bonneville Company. Did I say Bonneville Company? I meant from Triumph. The Scrambler 400X and the Speed 400. About five weeks ago, I published a sort of first thoughts video, not a first impressions video, because I haven't seen one of these bikes in the flesh. And I published that video reluctantly at the request of viewers. Now, I made it very clear in that video that my um, opinion of Triumph is a very realistic one. I've put my money down on Triumphs. I still own three. I've experienced the anguish of Triumph ownership, as have many others that watch this channel. And a couple of years ago when they approached me, I was even prepared to give them a second chance in order to restore my faith in the brand, which resulted in me allowing the factory to have my T120 for a few weeks. And it was returned to me damaged with a very untidy um, statutory recall rectification which not only looked horrendous, but in the process of carrying out that rectification on the wiring, the completely disabled my fuel gauge and fuel computer, and then absolved themselves of any responsibility. My experience of Triumph has been very well documented in the years that this channel has been running, and I've always backed up my opinion of the brand with evidence. Now, now, what I'm not going to do is to continue to produce that evidence in order to justify my stance to every Tom, Dick, Harry and Triumph fanboy that demands it from me in the comments section. If you want to watch the truth of Triumph ownership, watch those videos. Now that video that I published a few weeks ago actually got pretty good views and there were a few things that came up in the comments section as a result of its publication. Things that I had noticed before, but I was trying to be fair to Triumph. I didn't want the video to come over as too negative, so I decided to omit them from the video. But obviously, some of my more discerning viewers picked up on them, and it started a few little debates here and there. So, I thought what I would do is cover those off in today's video. So, if you're one of those Triumph fanboys who sort of, you know, get the panties in a twist every time someone says something that they don't like, I suggest you go and find a fluffy kitten video and seek viewing fulfilment that way, because you're probably not going to get it from this video. I'm going to try and deal with the various things that came up in the comments section of that video as quickly as I can, because to be quite honest, I've not got an awful lot of interest in this subject. First thing first, a lot of complaints about the fact that, you know, there was no sound of these motorcycles uh, in the video footage that I'm playing back now. This is uh, Triumph's press release, it's there from their press pack, and it's silent, there is no sound. Now, bearing in mind my observations about the single cylinder engine that's been used on this bike, I sort of had an idea why they'd chosen not to put any sound on these videos, and... I've watched one or two reviews and I got a very short 
sound clip um, from that. I can't play it back to you for copyright reasons. Triumph would love a reason like that to shut me down. But it seems to me they've chosen to omit the sound from these bikes because basically they sound like a moped. Let's put it this way, the sound of the engine does not go with the look of the bike. Now, another thing that the more discerning viewers had picked up on from this footage, because I'd noticed it, but I decided not to mention it. And the reason I didn't mention it is it looked to me like they'd just taken a load of Instagram um, influencers or something like that to rad these bikes for this footage because the cheap. They'll do it for a barbecue and a few beers. Certainly not what you would consider to be experienced professional riders. So I didn't consider that it was fair to mention it, but other people have picked up on it. These bikes seem to be quite twitchy. It's subtle and it's hard to make out from this footage, but it looks to me like these bikes oversteer a little bit. Now that's not a deal breaker, it's an idiosyncrasy that riders learn to overcome. It looks to me like it's a product of rather soft rear suspension and a steep steering angle or steepish. Now obviously there is a caveat to this, these are not production motorcycles, they are late stage prototypes, pre-production bikes. So it could be something that uh, Triumph will pay attention to and dial out before these hit the showroom floors. That red one does remind me of a Honda sometimes. Now, one thing that Triumph have um, sort of announced is that the Indian bikes will have some different components fitted to them compared to the international export bikes. We know that the Indian prices have been announced and they are incredibly low. Now, Triumph have said that these differences are due to the different markets, but what I think the main is they're using some cheaper components in the Indian Triumphs and possibly upgrading them for the international market because they're going to be asking more money on the international market than they are in India and they're going to have to justify that somehow. The general laws of gravity and physics are exactly the same in India as they are anywhere else in the world so other than that I don't understand the changes. Now, bearing in mind, and if I've got this right, that in the Indian market, the buyer pays something like the equivalent of 28% VAT on the purchase of these bikes. So they're making these bikes for nothing. The most notable mention so far is that the suspension will have different internals. The uh, Indian bikes will have different wheels. And of course, for the export market, which will be built in Thailand, uh, there'll be no Saragard. Only time will tell if and what other components will differ. Now, on this shot, look at the untidy wiring between the forks and the fuel tank. I got dozens of comments on this. I have noticed it myself. And let's face it, this has been one of Triumph's biggest weaknesses. Faulty electrics caused by poor untidy routing of the cables. Again, I didn't mention it in my original video because these are pre-production bikes, but this is exactly the same kind of mess that we've seen on the 900 and 1200cc water-cooled Bonnevilles, which have caused quite a lot of problems and have prompted two mandatory safety recalls on their bikes. One of which, on the headstock, exactly like we've seen on these bikes, was causing the ignition to cut and lights to go out when people went round right-hand bends. I'm not aware of anyone being hurt, but obviously the authorities here in the UK uh, decided that that wasn't good enough and it had to be changed. And the rectification, as I said earlier on, resulted in me having no fuel gauge or fuel computer and Triumph refused to take any responsibility for that. So keep an eye on that on the production models. It'll be interesting to see whether they tidy that up and sort it out or whether, you know, we're just going down the same road that we always have done with Triumph. Just a couple of things I want to blast through quickly before reaching sort of my main point on this video. That's the MPG figures. First of all, the engine. In my original video, I mooted that this might be quite a tiring bike to ride due to vibration. And there was one Indian sort of review discussion video that I watched that suggested 
this is the case i think the expression that was used is the nature of the engine doesn't make you want to use the performance apparently the engine starts to feel a bit strained at anything above 6500 revs which is where the performance gains on this motorcycle start to sort of outcompete other brands it's not a surprise not to me anyway you know the japanese manufacturers went through this during the 60s 70s and the 1980s and to a large extent eventually abandoned it because experienced mature riders simply don't want that kind of riding experience although i get the feeling those are not the type of riders that this bike is aimed at now it was suggested by these reviewers that this is a bike designed to sort of attract riders coming from 150cc machines uh, into something a little bit more powerful but and this is their words not mine they would likely get bored of it within sort of six months and want to change to something else which brings us on to the sales figures that i've had thrown at me about a hundred times i think in this video first of all they've sold ten thousand units and then more recently they've sold twenty thousand units i'd like to just point out triumph haven't sold any of these bikes these are pre-sales figures based on people expressing an interest in the bike. They're not sales at all. Elon Musk did something very similar back in 2013 with the Tesla models. It's a marketing ploy designed to make prospective purchasers think that the bike is desirable and prompt them to run in and put the money down on it. They are not actual orders, they're just expressions of interest. Very different thing from sales. As I've said in the past, Triumph is a very smoke and mirrors sort of a company. So let's wait and see what happens sort of a year from now when these bikes have hit the sales room floors and they've actually sold some before we start touting how many bikes have been sold. And last but not least, and this is the most curious one of all, the official MPG figures for these two motorcycle models. Now, in my last video, I made some calculations based on the type of engine, the size of the engine, and its general performance figures. I wasn't very confident about the calculations that I came up with, but I noted that it was around about 67 miles per imperial gallon, which isn't great for a 400cc single cylinder bike. Now, when I said this, on the day of publication of that video, numerous people jumped into the comments section to say that the chief engineer for Triumph had appeared on Bennett's uh, bike social video about these two models. And I was totally wrong because he'd mooted a figure of round about 80 mpg although he wouldn't give an exact figure because the homologation figures um for sort of the the statutory disclosure of um mpg figures had not yet been settled which is fair enough although you would think that um, if they've launched the bike they would have those figures done already and to some extent for about 20 minutes i was forced to eat humble pie in sort of giving out inaccurate information until a few people pointed out to me that they'd been on the triumph website for i think it was the netherlands originally but then the uk website and the official mpg figures that is the homologated figures that have been ascertained through specific government laboratory grade testing on the mpg figures for this bike came out at 63 miles per gallon for the speed 400 and 62 miles to the gallon and some change for the scrambler now as luck would have it uh, during a, a text conversation with someone i'd taken a photograph of the screen uh, to show this to someone so i do actually have a copy of it on my phone it would appear on face value that my calculations were far more accurate than the chief engineer of Triumph who supposedly helped design and oversaw the testing of this engine. Now, just to make it clear, if they publish these figures, they have to be accurate and correct so they don't mislead customers. But as far as I've been able to tell for a motorcycle, they don't actually have to publish those figures. But if they are published, they have to be correct. 
Now, I'm not quite sure how long these figures were actually up for on the official Triumph website, but you would expect that if they'd made um, an error with that figure, especially if it was an error that didn't show the bike in a very good light, they would quickly correct it and put the correct figures up. Instead, after a couple of days, they not only removed those figures, they completely omitted the fuel consumption section of the specifications panel for the bike on their official website. They no longer supply any fuel consumption figures for this bike. Now, this is odd. It's been like this for over a month now. There's been plenty of time, if it was just an error, for them to correct that error and put it back up. Instead, they've chosen to omit it and leave it out completely. And let's face it, for a lot of motorists, uh, MPG figures are important because fuel is expensive. And certainly for a lot of budget conscious motorists or motorcyclists, this would be enough to put them off sort of classing this bike as a future purchase. Now, I'm confused by this. I've tried my best to think up of an innocent explanation for these differences in MPG and the fact that they've now taken it from the website. I'm struggling to find an innocent explanation. But what I do find a little bit concerning, especially if those figures were correct, which they should be, is that some Indian review channels are now quoting MPG figures, that's for Imperial gallons, of up to 96 miles to the gallon, which is ridiculous. Or should I say, it's ridiculous if the bike they tested was in the state of tune that Triumph supplies on its website. It's all very curious, and if I'm honest, a little bit concerning. And the other question that has to be asked, if Triumph really did design, create and test this engine, why didn't they know what the MPG figures were? Surely that's one of the most basic sort of data points that you collect from the development of an engine. So in my mind, I have to question whether Triumph had anything to do with the development of that engine other than submitting requirements for how it should look externally. I'll let you decide. I suppose it'll all come out in the wash in the end. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like and consider becoming a subscriber if you're not already a subscriber. I will, of course, be back on Friday. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.